please help me. I think my bird is sick. Whoa, dude, are you grinding the 20 piece McNuggies? You're crazy, bruh. You crazy. Hello, good morning. Oh, it is too early, baby. It is. Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And man, oh man, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. CES is going on. And people are going to it. People are going to <laughs> CES. That is the more shocking part to me. I just, I'm, I feel very... I feel very relieved that the people that I know that are working CES, uh, Trisha, Trisha Hirschberger, yeah. um, Ashley Escada, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Kanata, they're all going to like satellite studios. Yeah. I feel really weird for friends of mine that are at CES right now because let me tell you something. Shit ain't fucking around. Uh, look, okay. So I'm going to share something. Mm. I have dreamed about going to CES since I was a child. I know, and every time you, know you say this. so, I'm always like, you don't want to go. I you said it every time, and I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to go find out, and it's fine if I get there and it's not all that. Yeah. I don't even have this like really elevated view of it in my head. It's just one of those things that I couldn't do, so I want to be able to be like, but yes. I can. It's a rite of passage. It, right? It's a and rite it's of passage. it's something that like, as a kid with access to early YouTube, and seeing people cover CES in like 2007. You got early YouTube? <laughs> you got the, you, got you, the you got you got the videos before anybody else did? Yeah, I did. Whoa. But like in 2007 watching people go and cover CES and being like, "Holy shit, can you imagine?" That being the coolest thing in the fucking world to me as like a 14-year-old. Every year I'm like, "This is going to be the year I'm going to CES." And this is not the year because it keeps having the yeah. deadly virus. As soon as I was like, I could go, I could go, I could just hey, go. Hey, maybe ne maybe next year we do we do go. we do. It's too early. CES edition. And it'll be me being like, I'm finally here, and Anthony being like, see. I um was I was not permanently banned, but I was asked to leave Samsung's area one year. It was the year when everybody was announcing smart fridges, mm -hmm. and I told this guy I was going to interview him about smart fridges for <laughs> Revision Three. Okay. And then I was, and then when when I started interviewing, I'm like, "So what do we have here?" He's like, "Well, this is our brand new smart fridge," and I just screamed "Why?" over and over again at him. <laughs> and uh, they asked me to leave Samsung. <laughs> you know, this actually. Rem <laughs> First of all. It's fucking tight. Good for you. Thanks. Uh, this reminds me of a story that somebody dropped in our Discord. Uh, AZ, thank you very much for sharing this um, horror with us. Uh, <laughs> mm. I saw this story. So this is on uh, Tech Meme. The Verge uh, put up the article. Samsung says its 2022 TVs will support NFTs, including displaying, browsing, purchasing, and showing history and blockchain metadata. Whoa, smart thank TVs support goodness. JPEGs now? Whoa, thank goodness. Thank you can put a JPEG goodness. on a TV? Hey, I can buy a JPEG of a monkey on my television. I can invest in a scam straight from the comfort of my couch. Wow. It's a good thing I'm not at, C at CES this year. I would get banned from Samsung again. Um, I'm so hoping that by the time that we do go to CES next year, mm -hmm. NFTs have kind of like fallen off a little bit. Because right now they just keep going up and up and up. And like, look, I know they'll still exist next year, but I'm hoping they just won't be like this. Like we have to talk about a different NFT every show. Well, and it's funny that you bring that up, Sage, because on, on Monday... <laughs> <laughs> we talked about you didn't know this was coming on monday we talked about how squeenix little squeenix their president came out and said uh yo matsuda said yo we gotta we gotta get on these nfts the future of games is nfts yo did y'all hear about nfts unfortunately and, we've heard so much and everybody was like boo hiss boo Boo! Except for stockholders, their stock fucking surged the moment they said blockchain in video games. 
And I'll tell you what, I think, I think this is why most people do it. I don't think a lot of these companies have any concrete or real plans to get into blockchain. I think they're saying it for investors right now. Damn. And then in 18 months when this shit is gone, they'll be like, oh, well, thank goodness we didn't, you know, we, we've revisited and we've uh, we've diverted that. And they weren't doing yeah, anything. Yeah, you know, we did our research. We so. did research and we thought it wasn't. Uh, um, the future of games isn't having fun. Exactly. No, the future of games is work. I have to point out how funny our chat is really quick. Uh <laughs> Harry said, did you know that most TVs can run 60 NFTs per second, if not more? They're like NFT super machines. Is that, is that what mining crypto is? <laughs> Watching a video. Is that mining crypto? And Blade of Creation said, just wait until they find out the way to make many JPEGs move in a progression that tells a story. We're you should patent NFT that. We're going to NFT movies, everybody. Actually, David Lynch already sells NFT movies, and it sucks that he does it. <laughs> it's David Lynch and Interpol got together and made a series of short films that's just for NFTs. Fuck you. Listen, everybody, shut up about the NFTs. I know we brought them up. But shut but up. But shut up about them. <laughs> stop. I know, I know we brought, listen, I know that we're the ones that brought them up this morning. But stop. But shut your mouth about these NFTs, all right? stop um additionally uh in our fantastic discord uh alonzo <laughs> put up an nft that he right clicked <laughs> that's not garfield he says that's garfield that's not garfield that i right clicked that's garfield nft that's add it to the pile he, that's heathcliff at best at best that's a heathcliff um this is your daily reminder to right click some nfts listen right click every nft you can you know, while we're talking about CES, though, I do want to talk about some of the good, the good big news that came out of CES. Let's get, uh, let's get it. Uh, the biggest, of course. PSVR two. If you were on the fence about selling your original PSVR before it, before the value went down, like me, you waited too long. <laughs> The time to sell was before yesterday. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Now I'm stuck with an original PSVR. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll trade it into GameStop for thirteen dollars, and I'll get a I'll get a Funko Pop for it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a used F Funko. Pop. Oh, a used Funko Pop for sure. A refurbished Funko. Pop. <laughs> a GameStop refurbished Funko Pop. It's got like four <laughs> stickers on it <laughs> that you can't pull off, and the residue of three more. Uh. Here's what's up. They gave their big uh, CES presentation last night where they talked about all the future of Sony. And one of the big things they talked up was PSVR 2. It is called officially PlayStation VR 2. Uh, the controller that they announced earlier this year that we, we talked about already is the PSVR 2 Sense controller is what it's going to be called. Um, and the big news is that it's coming bundled with a new Horizon game. Horizon uh, Call of the Mountain is PSVR 2 only. Fascinating. Now, that's, that doesn't mean that there won't be a PSVR mode for the big, the big boy Horizon that's coming, but this is a full, brand new Horizon experience for PSVR 2. I find this such interesting timing as we're still in the hype cycle leading up to Forbidden West mm -hmm. that it's just like, why wouldn't you announce that after launch? Oh. It feels weird to have this split for people to be like, well, you can have the exclusive PSVR too, but like there might be Forbidden West on PSVR, but. Well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you I why. It's very odd. I'll tell you why. I think it's because when the original PSVR launched, I think they launched with, with, a, great, uh, with a great slate of titles. Mm -hmm. The problem was none of them were, like I guess the, th the biggest thing they had in terms of recognition was London the Heist, which was connected to some other which was connected to another Sony franchise, but like, you know, PSVR launched and it was like, where's Uncharted? Where's Sackboy? Where's, you know, where's any of the stuff that would work in PSVR that's like yeah. big Sony franchises that would work? Um, and there weren't any, mm -hmm. you know? But they have other franchises. 
they I mean they do. They have tons of other franchises and none of them were on PSVR at launch. Right. And so that's what I'm saying is this time around. Oh. Well, I think they're I think they're piggybacking off of all the Horizon hype. I don't think this is a I don't think it's a bad move. I th- I think I think you're right in that some people will be like well, wait, what's the difference between these two games? And, like, how does it... But I think most people will be like, oh, shit, Horizon on PSVR 2. That's yeah. the announcement. Yeah. That's the headline For that I think me, most people take away. it had the effect away. of, I'm not buying two Horizon games right now. You don't have to. One comes with it. That's fair. Uh, so what's, what's in the terms price of, point on this? Well, we don't know. And we also don't know what it looks like. What we have are tech specs. And they're spicy they are spicy good tech specs so um let me just i'm gonna look up right now oculus quest 2 specs because that's what most people have yep let's do that direct comparison oculus quest 2 specs um i also have the original i have the original vive Mm -hmm. uh which is a little long in the tooth at this point right um so when you're talking about the oculus quest 2 uh let's look at that display method so you're looking at an LCD that has 1800 by 1920 per eye, okay? And that's about a, I think that's about a 70 to 80 degree field of vision is what they say. With uh, the PSVR 2, uh, you have an OLED display with a 2000 by 2040 per eye. And I believe the field of view per eye is 110 degrees. Now, the other thing that's important for that's huge. That's huge. Now, the other thing that's important for uh, VR is frame rate and refresh rate, right? You want it to be as quick as possible so you don't get the motion sickness, so the mm-hmm. world looks as real as possible. The Oculus Quest 2 has like a 90 hertz. Not everything goes into 90 hertz. You can install a hack, which I did to make everything 90 hertz. Mm. Um But the PSVR is either 90 hertz or 120 hertz, depending on the game. That so is 90 is a base. That's huge. Um, now, the other thing that's kind of crazy, they put in some real like bleeding edge tech. It's got eye tracking the inside. The eye tracking is something that um, they were hinting towards mm-hmm. previously. And I find eye tracking just spooky enough. <laughs> the amount that it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um. So eye tracking in theory, as opposed to when you're looking around in VR having to it knows where you're looking, and it'll be like, ah, yes, over there. Right. Um, uh, Blade of Creation is asking in the live studio audience, that means 45 FPS per eye, right? No. What it is is it's one 4K panel that's divided into two eyes, so it is going to be 90 hertz per eye. When they say when the, when a VR headset says it's 90 hertz, that's per eye. Um, eye tracking is such a wildly like it's still considered a pretty high-tech feature in vr headsets Mm -hmm. so it's interesting that they're bringing this in uh it's got the headset based controller tracking no more cameras no more positioning things yeah it's got the cameras inside and goes in in out which means they could also potentially do the finger tracking like the oculus does um it's going to use the sense controllers that we saw uh announced earlier last year yo on this eye tracking thing, yeah. the thing that they highlight in the PlayStation blog post is this allows players to interact more intuitively in new and lifelike ways, allowing for a heightened emotional response and enhanced expression that provides a new level of realism in gaming. That's spookier. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, no, no, we're going to know what you're feeling. Yeah. We're going to know what you're feeling through your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... It's gonna have because it's got it's got 3D audio. It's got eye tracking. You it's got can see me cry. It's got haptic feedback in the headset. Mm-hmm. So all of this stuff is gonna is gonna make for a much more immersive experience. Um, if you've ever used one of Sony's like 3D audio headsets, that's essentially what I think we're looking at here. Yeah, uh, I have the one for PlayStation, and it's really good. Um, and then of course the PlayStation, the PS5 has that Tempest 3D audio system built into it, mm-hmm. so it's going to use that just like it would use Atmos to really position audio all around you as you're turning around. Um, it's this is pretty dope. Uh, the Sense controller, if you don't remember, looks like this. It's uh, it's of course va- based on the Knuckle controller 
everybody's basing basing their stuff on the knuckles uh, that Valve came out with. And it's going to be good, I think, y'all. I think it's going to be good, and I think it's going to be very expensive. I think they're going to try to keep the price down because they Sony's Sony's strat is a, is adoption rate. Mm-hmm. They put out PSVR and it has it had a very strong launch for a while. PSVR was the highest selling VR headset in the United States because it had that accessibility that the others previously didn't. Yeah, and the problem is the tech was a little long in the tooth and mm-hmm. they didn't support it long term. Right. And then Oculus. And then Oculus and came. Then Oculus. And then Oculus. Quest 2 just came and ate everybody's lunch. And I think, you know, Valve didn't really care. Valve's like, we don't care who's making your headset. Yeah. And HTC was like, really? Dude, really? And they're like, yeah, you knew we were going to do this to you. Yep. We gave you your chance. You were supposed to take take the lead. You didn't. We don't care. So Oculus runs everything now. Mm-hmm. PlayStation wants to come in and, and, and take a little bit of that back. And it's a good time to do it. Those Quest 2s are a couple years old now. Yep. If people are really into VR, they're probably looking to upgrade. I say four to 500. If they do it around 400 or 350, they'll dominate. I agree. I think if they can get us in that under 400, that would be absolutely crushing. As a reminder, the Oculus Quest 2 is either 199 or 299, depending right, but on came the out, model. But I think came out at 299 or 399 initially. Was it? Let yeah. Me double check. Because they've had a they've had a um, They've had a price drop over the last couple of years. Uh, I'm so sure if, I'm not speaking incorrectly on the no, price. No, I think you're, cor- you're correct on the current oh, no, price. No, it is, it is $299, $399. $299, Okay. Um, so a couple of people have already been asking in the live studio audience, is this going to be backwards compatible with PSVR? I would hope so. If they don't, that's a huge misstep. And I think it's easy enough to do. Mm-hmm. I think it's easy enough to do um, because... PSVR is a very low tech platform. Right. I think it'll be more whether companies that have put out PSVR games. I don't think it'll be like you flip a switch and it runs on the new one. Mm-hmm. I think I think developers will have to put something cuz so much of the positioning in those games is built on move cameras and PSVR camera tracking mm-hmm. and that's why you needed to have a PS4 camera with an adapter. Yeah. On your PS5. Like, you couldn't use a PS5 camera Mm -hmm. and play PSVR games. Right. So here's where I land currently on PSVR 2. Um, One, I think the biggest trouble they're going to run into is people still not being able to get their hands on a PS5. Mm -hmm. Um, Somebody, uh, Atheist, in the chat said, silly question, I I can't connect this to my PC, can I? No, you're going to have to have a PS5 for it. There have been hacks for the old one, but... Mm -hmm. They don't work great. So in like considering that cost, right, a lot of a lot of people still don't have their hands on a PS5 and the cost of a PS5, not easy. So it's not only do you have, let's say, three ninety nine to buy the PSVR because you've already spent five, six hundred dollars on a console. Yeah. At that point. So I don't see how PlayStation VR overtakes what Quest is doing, especially if Quest can anytime soon hit us with a Quest 3, if Oculus can hit us with a Quest 3. That's what's tricky is it's how many Quest 2s that people got last year or two years ago are still being actively used in those households, right? Because I know a lot of people that got VR headsets because it's like, oh, 200 bucks for a VR headset. Yeah, let's try it out. And then they played a couple games. They played some Beat Saber or whatever, and then yeah. they and then they put them down, and they don't really they don't really mess with them very much anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, w- what PlayStation is looking for is they're looking for people who want something that does more than a self contained headset can. Yeah, but also aren't willing to put fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars into a PC gaming rig, right? Which with you can run with almost that with the PlayStation and the PSVR. I mean, you're still at, you're at a grand. You're at a mm. grand or eleven hundred. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, it's it's really that's the thing is the VR like the VR market right now is really tricky because because the, the other thing is like the biggest breakthrough anybody's had has been Oculus, and I still wouldn't call that like a huge breakthrough. I wouldn't say that like. 
one out of every five houses I go to has a VR headset, you know? And when they do, they're not necessarily a quest every time. Um, I mean, of, of like, because our friends are skewed, I would. Even with our skewed... I'm like, one in five of my nerd friends has a quest, too. <laughs> a lot of my friends do, but I, would, I wouldn't say generally in the United States. Exactly. Like, you so, know. like, that's why, I mean, our pool is very skewed. Yeah, and so for people that, like... What if I already own an expensive PC? The Quest is great because you just plug it into your expensive PC. Or what if I re own a really expensive PC and I want like a top of the line VR experience for it? Mm -hmm. Well, then you're going to get like a Valve Index or something. Yeah, exactly. So I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited about the tech in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very happy to see them pushing something when they kind of didn't have to. Yeah, I thought they had just, I thought they had really, until they announced those sense controllers. Yeah. I was like, they're done with VR. Yeah. They really didn't have to, and I'm excited about that. I just want people to be able to get their hands on these things. And that's the thing that always, like, I get excited for something, and then I'm like, there's there's so many problems in just getting to the console that, um... Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit, because let's talk about some more of these CES announcements that have been uh, made. The the thing that's looming in the background of everything at CES, other than the virus, which is literally looming in the background of CES, is supply chain issues. How do I get it? How do I get this thing this that you're announcing? This is so cool that you're making this thing. Can I have it? And it's it's honestly big announcements from some of these companies at CES this year feel a little tone deaf. Let's talk about AMD and NVIDIA. Yo. AMD confirmed their Ryzen 7000 CPUs. They confirmed the RX 6500s, uh, the XTs. They confirmed a lot of these things. But yo, how, how, how am I going to get these Zen 4 chips right now? You're not. How do we get these chips? We'd love to get chips. I would, baby, all I want is chips. We would love some chips. Mm. Give me a little bit of that chip. But like, that's really tough, man. It's really tough because, you know, not only that is like Ryzen 7000, it's going to take a new socket. Yep. It's an entirely new form factor CPU, yep. which means they're going to need new motherboards. Yep. So. So can I have it? And when can I have it? Can I even get a motherboard? Like when? When? When am I going to get this? That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, not only that, I mean, look. They sound very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. They sound very exciting. NVIDIA also, this is this one's really wild to me. <laughs> NVIDIA fucking went ahead and announced the 3090 Ti. Did we lose me? We lost me. No, we didn't. There we go. Hmm. Uh, the 3090 Ti. Stop. Are, Stop. Are you... F Stop it. Are you... F are you? Get out of here. Stop that. What are you doing? Get out of here. Is, you're embarrassing us. CES 2022, we're announcing products that people will get their hands on in 2025. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, and by then we'll be outdated because you'll have made eight more chips. Like. <laughs> yo. Eight more uh, graphics cards, like, with no chips. <laughs> I understand, like, here's a little bit of, this is the problem with I mean, this is one of the big problems with the, with late stage capitalism and planned obsolescence in the electronics market. Sorry, we can't keep up with the product cycles that you need to keep your growth and your investors happy right now because the world is at 70% capacity at best. Why are you announcing all this new shit? It doesn't make sense, and I agree that it is. It's tone deaf. It's extremely tone deaf. It is so. It's shockingly unaware. Like even when they announced the thirty eighty Ti, it was like, "Fuck, guys, hold yeah. on, let people get their shit first. Now, there are some other announcements they made where I'm like, "This is a good announcement." They're bringing GeForce now to Samsung smart TVs. So when your TV is not downloading NFTs at 60 frames a second for you, when you're not browsing the NFT marketplace on the metaverse on your Samsung TV, 
uh, GeForce Now is going to be built into Samsung Smart TVs. This is the kind of announcement that makes sense this year. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. This that is this is it. This is, hey, your existing product, mm -hmm. we have created something that adds functionality to that in a year where physical products cannot be made or brought to you. Thank you. Yes, please. Continue. Uh, they're also working on bringing GeForce now to mobile devices with AT&T. Sure. Yes. Built into every device? That's cool. Okay. Why not? That makes sense. Thank you. Let's do it. Let's continue. Um. They also revealed 10 new RTX games that are going to use GPU accelerated ray tracing or NVIDIA DLSS. Uh, that includes Hitman 3, Fantasy Star Online 2, New Genesis. Hey, anybody want to play Fantasy Star Online 2 with me? I know the answer is no, but I'm going to ask again. Uh, I tried uh, before, and nobody wanted to. Uh, okay. Uh, Rainbow Six Extraction and Void Train. Uh they also announced Drive Hyperion, which is part of its autonomous driving pro program. You know, they're trying to bring the self-driving cars to market, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got the image processing AI. It, it makes a lot of sense. I'd like to see them come to market, and I'd like to see them come to market very quickly. Uh, because I want competition in that space. Absolutely. I want competition in that space really badly. Uh so Drive Hyperion is a uh, it's a high comp high performance computer and sensor architectures for smart cars. That's cool. And then Drive Chauffeur, which is an AI powered platform that allows your car to drive itself. So Hyperion is the hardware, Chauffeur is the software. Um, hooray! Hooray! That's great. Uh, they also announced the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti coming to laptops. Is it? Yeah, cool. Is it cool? Is it great? When? When? Where? Who? Show me. How? Don't show me one. Show me a stack of them. Show me. Can you even get your hands on ten? Show me at least. Show me at least a hundred. Can you have a hundred? Show me one Best Buy's worth of laptops with these chips in it. <laughs> you can't. I fucking believe you. Uh, they also announced uh, twenty-seven inch esports displays, fourteen forty p, three hundred and sixty hertz refresh rates for those no scopes. Great. 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 How? When? Where are the panels coming from? Come on. Come on. Fun idea. Fun idea. <laughs> Harry said, uh, I thought uh, Thorin was eSports. Yeah. Yeah. These are monitors for Thorin and yeah. Thorin only. Only Thorin can have them. That's because they only can get one made. <laughs> <laughs> they actually had enough supplies to make one, and it's just for Thorin. Uh, another thing that Sony likes to do at CES uh, you know, Sony likes to talk about how they're the only company that can do what Sony does because of all of their integration. Mm -hmm. As somebody who hosted CES for Sony for multiple years, I know that that's a huge part of their messaging. Yeah. So it's always about, like, if they announce a VR headset, one of the things that they want to let you know is, hey, our panels are coming from our home theater department, and Bravia TVs fucking smoke. Our, our 3D sound is coming from our audio and headphone division. You know, all that stuff. And one of the things that they really like to let you know is, yo, we own IP, we make the cameras, we make the projectors, we make the screens for movie theaters, so we make the movies. Which is, like, look, sick flex. It's a sick flex. Fuck one, yeah. Although one year I was there, and I was hosting for them, and they were flexing that with Green Hornet. <laughs> They made a very big deal of like we're the only company that could bring you Green Hornet, and I was I mean, like, "True." <laughs> I was like, "All right." Hey, they're not lying. They're not lying. <laughs> they are the only one. Seth Rogen came out. He was like, "Hello, it's me, <laughs> the Green Hornet. I'm high right now." You know, and it was, uh, it was. I was like, "Okay," I got my picture taken with the Green Hornet car. It was very cool. Stephen Chow was not there. It sucked. Um. But this year, they got to do it. This is one of the good years. Yeah. Because they got to do it with Uncharted. Ooh, baby. You know, I want everybody who was talking all about how baby boy Tom Holland is too much of a baby boy. And Nathan Drake is older and cooler. And what about Nathan Fillion? And Nathan Fillion is 50. 
Nathan Fillion is Sully's age. Nathan Fillion was once the correct choice. Nathan Fillion was the, we we missed that window. Tom Holland is so delightfully charming yes. in everything. Yes. And every clip that we've seen I I love we got a little bit of young Nate in like Uncharted 3 and 4. Yep. I think it's great. And here's the thing. Like, all of the people complaining, there's no way you're not aware enough to understand that, like, they're trying to build a franchise. Yeah. You, you want to run into having another person that we go, ah, shit, they're 50. Yeah. We don't want in five years we have to, like, we have to cast another Nathan Drake. No. Let's follow this boy's life. Let's let's start him young. Start him young, let's baby. Let's start with, with the, the, the sweet boy, Tom Holland, and let him age with this character appropriately. Let's um, let him age into it. Uh, that's awesome. That's aw It's great. I agree. I would love it if they would stop putting Mark Wahlberg in movies. I don't know what. Like, it feels, every time I watch the for trailer. For who? For who they for do it. Who? For every who? Every time I watch the trailer, I'm like, like, I get re-surprised by it every time. I'm like, fucking Mark Wahlberg. Because, like, nobody's putting Mark Wahlberg in stuff anymore. Not movies of this size. No, I think the last thing was, like, Transformers. Which, like. Which, like, and it was Transformers 17 or whatever? Right. So, like, who's doing that? And how did that happen? I, I can't help but wonder if it's production companies involved. It takes, a, it takes a long time to, like, once these people are entrenched and they're, like, and they're in good with specific studios and directors yeah. and things like that. Like, they're just – and I think, I think Mark Wahlberg was involved – from an earlier point, I believe he was very nearly Nathan Drake when David O. Russell was doing Uncharted. So this would have been like seven, eight years ago. That makes sense. Yeah. So I think he is Sully now because he was almost Nate then. Fascinating. And like, look, I've worked with Mark Wahlberg. It used to be a cool flex. It's not a cool flex anymore. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at this trailer, though, or this clip. Now... This is an uncut clip. This was premiered at CES. Um, if you're trying to avoid Uncharted spoilers, this ain't the place to do it for the next uh, two minutes and 25 seconds. No? No audio? Where audio? What is audio? No audio? That's odd. Yeah. Video. Let's see if we can get that audio. Okay, give me just a minute. Yeah. Let me see if it's something on my end, too. Because it might be. You never know. You never know. We're going to work on this for a second, you know? You never yeah, know. Yeah, it should be coming through. Uh, everything on this end looks All right. correct. So Let's try this. Let's try it. Nope. No. We got audio on yours? No. Really? I thought we fixed that. Uh, no. <laughs> Be, no. <laughs> Look. <laughs> it's a live show, everybody. Uh, hold on. Let me see if my NDI is doing a thing. Um, I'm watching this on my phone. There we go. It looks like she's CG at this res resolution. It's also because um, yeah, that's a it. perfect human. Yeah, she's perfect. Uh, that is, uh, the to me, the weird sister from Sabrina. And like a gem. There we go. That should be in everything. This, of course, uh, pulling from Uncharted hey, Three. Come on. Like she just looks like she was destined to be an action star, though, right? Oh yeah. Uh, sorry, there are no captions because Sony. Also, it would mostly just be gunshot sound. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, we saw in previous trailers that they're mostly taking set pieces from all the different games mm -hmm. and putting them together, uh, which, which again, is something that some people are bummed about, but I like. Yeah. I said, listen, here's my thing with an Uncharted movie series. Get the majority of the source material out of the way and then tell me stories of Nathan Drake that I haven't heard before. That's where I, that's where I land on this, you know? Yeah, I agree. 
I also think that that's the easy buy-in for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Show me a greatest hits of the games. Mm -hmm. I've played the games. The games are beautiful. That yeah, don't show me things I've already seen before. I know some people don't like that, but that's where I'm at. Man, this is this is such this this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be so cool. This is gonna be cool. It's gonna be a movie also. I think that sustains in just being a cool action movie for people that know nothing about Uncharted. Mm-hmm. Which I think is so correct. The physics of this is just have always been hilarious to me. That's awesome. I love it. It's an action movie. I don't yeah. want physics in my action movie. No. I want physics like this. Look, he managed to he managed to jump through the sky and surprise that man. Yeah. We love it. Now he's up and he's walking on it. Yeah. I love it. I want that. This is such a good follow-up for Tom Holland to to Spider-Man. Yeah. This is huge. Because it keeps him in that action comedy space, mm -hmm. but it's such a different character. So much more self assured. Yep. God, that's crazy good. Yeah. This is going to be so much fun. I wasn't interested, but this looks fun. It's just, it's going to be a really fun movie. Yeah. February 18th. February 18th for that. Yeah, I want young Nate in new scenarios. Absolutely. And I think that we, you know, should this movie do well, and I think it will. I think we'll have the opportunity to explore that. And I think that because we got Tom Holland, we'll have the opportunity to explore that. Now, speaking of Sony oh, and Spiderman. Don't do this. Uh, don't talk about him. I cannot make this up. They decided to delay Morbius to April Fool's Day. <laughs> I didn't even put that together. Hey, do you want to update your Apple software? Absolutely. Morbius is the living vampire, which we literally keep asking if it's a prank, is now delayed till April Fool's Day? Dude, dude, somebody at Sony, <laughs> somebody at Sony sat in a meeting and said, okay, 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 ready? We're going to, we're going to do a movie, right? Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be a vampire movie. Ooh. It's going to be Morbius the Living Vampire, because we own it. We can do that. What is a Morbius the Living Vampire? Exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, just huh. like we, it's literally laying around here. It's like I found it in a pile in the back of the office, and okay. I just found it. All right, cool. And it's here, and we're going to make it. Yeah. Okay, but ready? Who who plays the vampire? I, I, don't, I don't know. Jared Leto? No. <laughs> the tiny man with the small hands who tries to run a cult on an island? The guy with the fucking cult. And the band? And the, the band, band cult. The band cult, <laughs> the sorry. Band the serious cult. musician. And, and we'll release it. <laughs> we'll release it on April Fool's Day. Come on. That's not real. The movie's not real, That's right? That's what everybody's going to think. Now, <laughs> there are people, spider fans, spider boys. We're spider fans. We're spider fans. We're spider boys. That are saying, maybe this movie was delayed a few months for a reason. Because it's bad? No, a No Way Home related reason. Mm. That, listen, mm. I, I don't know when the spoiler safe window is, we're not so we're not it, yeah. going to. But there, there are events in No Way Home, and there are things that people want, and they're wondering... If they've delayed for three months to maybe add a little bit of that in. And I don't think so. I don't think so at all because here's the thing. They didn't just shoot No Way Home. They knew what they were doing. Why would they, after the movie comes out, be like, we got to take advantage of this? No. <laughs> no. I think. They knew what they were going to do. I think they had to delay it because the movie is that bad. And I think if it's Spider-Man related, I think it is that you cannot put out a movie with a Spider-Man character that's that bad after a movie that's that good. I that's think, actually what I think it is as I well. I think they're terrified they are going to completely destroy all the momentum they have from No Way Home. I agree. I think that they just got so much good press for making a good Spider-Man movie in collaboration with Marvel that they're like, 
we don't want people to go back to thinking that we make the bad superhero movies actually and this I think it's really fun being the good guys. Like they're having a really good time being the heroes right now. Yeah. And they're like, <sighs> and I think they understand that now that that is Spider-Man adjacent they're. I think they always wanted it to be a pretty big movie, mm-hmm. but I think now there are even more eyes on it than they thought there would be. Yes. And I think now they feel like they have to deliver in a way that they did not have to before. And like, look, everyone I've talked to is saying the same thing about this movie. Why? Why? Everyone. Uh, Everyone's saying the same thing. Why? Uh, the dislikes are not, uh, you know, showed on YouTube uh, anymore. Cowards. Do you have the option? Can you choose to show dislikes? Yeah, though? Sony could choose to show yeah, those. Yeah, so they're not. Um, And, like, the comments aren't great. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I liked how he turned into Dracula. That was pretty rad. Oh, my God. Mr. Sunday Movies commented that. I love yeah. that. I... I I keep saying if this if this was if it was 2004, 2005, damn that Morbius trailer be fresh. Yep. You know what I mean? Sure. It's not though. It's not though. Us is Morbius in the MCU, Sony. Yes and. <laughs> <sighs> there's a lot go there's a lot going on with the Sony with the Sony Cinematic Universe of Spider-Man movies or whatever they're calling it now. Uh, Morbius the Living Vampire. Come on. Come on. Come on. Literally found it in a pile. Literally, there are so many Spiderman characters. They were digging through things, <clears throat> and they were just found, like, a sheet of paper that says, like, you own Morbius the Living Vampire. The little, like, rights sheet to it, and they were like, oh, shit, what's this thing doing? Does anybody say, let's let's make bets right now. Does anybody say vampire in the Morbius movie? No. I say no. No. I say nobody uses the word vampire. No, no, no. They have uh, all of their fun ones. It's like, we talked about this. It's like how you yeah. say zombie. Yeah, the bloody sucky boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. He's a reborn alive dead man. <laughs> He's a pale, pale bitey now. <laughs> oh, no. He's a bloody suck boy. <laughs> uh, no, him. He's just pale and drinks blood. We don't have a word for it. We don't have a word for it. No one will ever have a word for it. Um, moving on from He's Morbius. He's a toother. He's a toother. Um, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Mm-hmm. People love it. Of it's a beautiful game. The PC version is out. It is not without its hiccups and its problems. But people really wanted this PC version, of course, for one thing. Mods, baby. And so I never have to turn on my PlayStation. What's up? (laughs) You've got to plug in that PlayStation and turn it on. I've done it once. How was it? I had a good time. Great. Um, I did it to play Puzzle Bobble. (laughs) How was that next-gen Puzzle Bobble technology? Honestly, pretty fucking tight. Anyway... (laughs) Uh, <laughs> mods to fix the frame rates, please. I mean, yes, it, but listen, there, there's, are more important there are more important mods out there. Hannah Louise tweeted this clip of her playing some of the most important Final Fantasy VII mods. Sage, let's take a look. <laughs> now, now, this is a mod to keep Cloud in his dress. And there it is. The meme boy. The meme boy is real. You're not real. Except for what? Dead. I am. I killed you with my own. Sephiroth or Sephiroth? the crown and golden of our time together. But oh, boy. <laughs> a favor to add. Fuck, that's so good. <laughs> Damn, now I want a Big Mac. Hey, it's 8.54 a.m. <laughs> Get one. Get it. Uh, God, I love mods. <laughs> yeah. I love that somebody did that. Somebody spent 
so much time making that. And I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud and I'm oh. so happy. Um, <laughs> Did you just grind that 20 piece McNugget? Yeah, sick. Nice, dude. Sick. Nice. <laughs> Nice. That's excellent. No, so no, we're not fixing the frame rate. No. But we are we are doing that, and that's pretty fun. I can dig that. You know, while we're talking about nuggies, we got a nuggy story. <laughs> nuggy net. Fresh nuggy news. We're on the nug wire. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Fucking fuck this website, man. Hey. What? Hold on. Let me take that again. Nug watch. What? Turns out I'm reading it. I'm not. Yeah. So it turns out that the that KFC. Now we've talked about some of the nuggy experiments that KFC is running worldwide. Uh, in Russia, KFC is testing out lab grown chicken which synthetic lab grown chicken oh my god fucking cnn website nobody needs hey hey nobody needs an autoplay video player fucking nobody it, is it myspace in 2006 yeah i don't want then my no i don't want my mouse cursor to turn into sparkles either right look am i going to force you when you view my myspace page to spend six minutes loading just to get my background cursor and autoplay of don't trust me by 303 yes do i want this on a news website no uh you should know first of all they're not putting the lab grown synthetic chicken on the american menu of America America's not ready. No, America would be so upset. America's not America's not ready to admit that we're that dystopian. We're almost there. Here's the thing. We're I almost there, Sage. Find this. And I think in three more months we'll all be willing to eat Soylent Green if the world keeps going the way it is. Look, like I don't have a problem with lab grown meat. Me neither. That's great. I think it's wonderful. That's a that's a thing that like we should be working towards. It's KFC doing it for me. It's the KF. It's the KFC uh, uh, dark projects. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just. I guess I don't like that KFC has those. Yeah, KFC. <laughs> KFC has has dark technology projects in secret laboratories. The idea of lab grown meat, awesome. Okay, right. So you're picturing it. Okay, there's a lab. There's a bunch of people in white coats, mm. really like working on this and developing something incredible that could save the world in a lot of ways um but then picture it's colonel sanders doing it instead and he's coming to visit the facility and he's touring the facility <laughs> right. and this and the scientists in their lab coats and their russian accents because this is, this is in russia and they're doing the dark this is the dark technology part this is this is kfc black ops and they are they're taking the colonel down and i mean listen the security clearance you gotta get you have to have level three to even know what the herbs and spices are. Of course. And we already know the herbs and spices exist. Uh-huh. This is secret, secret, secret shit. This is layers down. But here's the thing, and he's walking by and he's like, you know, we can't charge more than like two ninety nine for this, right? <laughs> <laughs> so like, I have created what is it? I have created life from nothingness, sustenance for the world that comes from my very hands. We gotta charge no more than two ninety nine for a ten piece for this, and that's my concern. <laughs> <laughs> Look, work on your projects. I just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a dark meat project. It's a dark meat project. That's where all the flavor is. <laughs> it's I all guess... in a dark. It's all in the dark meat projects. I'm just saying, I have my concerns. What I love KFC doing: making Crocs. Making video game consoles, making dating simulators, absolutely making those chocolate cakes. You know the ones uh -huh. with the hard frosting. I love when KFC does those things. Dark projects in Russia developing science uh, lab meat. I don't know if I love that as much. No, and listen, you don't have to worry about that right now. And so I would say, put it out of your mind forever. As, as we've learned in, over the last two years, don't worry about something until it's in your face 
And then when it's actually in your face, only worry about it a little. <laughs> so <laughs> this is not the Lab Grown Meat Project. This is simply Kentucky Fried Chicken partnering with Beyond Meat mm -hmm. to create Beyond Fried Chicken starting on January 10th. It's the first time a large chain is selling plant-based chicken products. Wow. That's kind of awesome. I think it's cool. So that's on January 10th. That's here in the U.S.? It's here in the U.S. Should we try it? Yeah, of course we should try it. What's, what's our We love days? nuggies. We, here's the thing. We're a little bit nuggy connoisseurs. We're kind of nug-obsessed. We're nug-sessed. Okay, so the, the 10th is a Monday, but there's no way they're going to give it to us at 8 a.m. You know what I mean? We've learned that the hard way. Yeah. So maybe it's a Wednesday show. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. Sometime next week. It's a funeral. There is, it's going to come in a green bucket. It's fancy. Tell all your friends. Uh, I like that they're doing this. Uh, it's yeah. going to be. Will you do live reaction? Absolutely. We're going to get some for the show. It's going to be six ninety nine for a six-piece value meal. If they won't give it to us anytime at 8 a.m., if the KFC is not open or not serving it at 8 a.m., we will have to do it as a Patreon exclusive to post it later in the day. Um, so Mama's it's perfect. it's a limited time, so they're not going to do this forever. It's just a test. Um, but I would love to see this take off. Yeah. I would love to see this take off. How much is it? Uh, six ninety nine for a six-piece value meal. That's actually... I'm surprised because like Beyond Meat's expensive. I mean, that's that I think is the trick, right? Is is Beyond Meat's been working with all these large change beca chains because they're trying to get their production and up and their costs down. That makes sense. They need to be able to operate on a larger scale to cost less per unit. Because right now, if you're eating Beyond Meat or you're going and you're buying Beyond Meat, it's because you're already a vegetarian. And what they want is they want it to be less expensive than chicken so they want you to look at it and be like well i'm not a vegetarian but if this tastes like chicken mm -hmm. and it's better for the environment and it's cheaper yeah. why wouldn't i at least give it a try i love a beyond burger love a beyond burger love a beyond burger man if we could get impossible burgers at the grocery store um chipotle this week by the way said that it is bringing plant-based chorizo okay nationwide instead of um ground up paper towels or whatever they use right now that's great that's gonna be plants i mean i guess i guess it could still be the ground up paper, paper towels, towels. Plant -based. so no. it could just be a marketing thing uh and then of course starbucks has the impossible breakfast sandwich mm -hmm. uh which i order all the time it's true um this is pretty exciting beyond is right now just kind of hoping that exposure in places like this keep them in business their stock dropped 50 percent last year damn people are kind of over the novelty of it which is i think why they need to get their prices down yeah i yo plant meat and lab meat let's go let's go that shit makes me feel like i'm living in the future yeah it's it's one of the i would call it one of the neutral aspects of a cyberpunk life I it's agree. not positive it's not negative well it might be positive it depends on why we had to do it right it depends on if we did it for progress and because we as a society have gotten past the need for meat mm -hmm. like real meat um but if it's a blade runner thing where it's like "Ooh, your oops. owl looks real is that a real like is right. that a real owl of course not there are no real owls exactly <laughs> like, it's, did we kill all of the things we needed for these or did we do it to preserve the things right uh, I think it's cool. I'd love a slab of Petri dish steak. Dude, me too. Hell yeah, man. Right now, those Petri dish steaks are so expensive, and you can only get them from certain places. I didn't even know. Good. I didn't even know you could get them. Baby, I got a science podcast. We have concerns.com. New episodes every Friday. I've wanted to try these for a while, but I mean, uh, a lab-grown steak right now will cost you like $100. Wow. And it's like, I'll do it, but... I don't have money. Um, <laughs> right. I, I would like to do it, but I don't have 100 of those. I don't have 100 of those money. Uh, you, I, don't, I only have a couple dollars. You want 100? No. No, I can't do that. Sage, we talk about a lot of capsule collections, collabs, team-ups between brands and video game makers. Yeah. And... 
I think it's interesting because something like this is considered to be something like this collab that we're about to bring up is considered to be like so wild and out of left field. And I don't think it should be, you know, uh, and this is immediately going to become like the headlines for this and everything are going to become very gendered and very weird and they shouldn't be. I think this is just a very cool collaboration and a very good idea. Yep. Which is um, OPI Nail Polish is collaborating with Xbox. Hell yeah. To create a line of colors based on Forza Horizon 5. Awesome. And Halo Infinite. It's fucking tight. And give you in-game items when you buy those colors. Awesome. And those in-game items can be things like specific pearlescent colors for your Master Chief Mjolnir armor. This was the thing when I was reading this that was the coolest about it. The fact that there are these like special in-game items where it's not just like, Pat, Pat, you could have a nail polish that says Xbox as a treat. Pat, Pat. Right. Like, no, this is a genuinely really fucking cool collaboration. I think that's tight. I mean, look at this pearlescent Mjolnir armor. I want it in my game and on my nails. It's so good. And that the the ice cream paint job on whatever is that a what is that a Bugatti? Car. What is that a Bugatti? It's got a big one seventy horses with the fuel fuel pump inject inject shirt. Yeah, pretty ombre on it. <sighs> yeah, really great <laughs> color scheme. I fucking love this. Um, uh, last year. Uh, ColourPop Cosmetics did a huge makeup collection based on Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing more and more stuff like this that I'm so fucking excited about. Dude, the Star Wars palettes were crazy. Yeah, they've done excellent Star Wars. They did specifically a Mandalorian collection as well. Mm -hmm. um, hey, everybody. Yeah, don't do, don't do the gendered headline. Don't do it. This is your reminder that nail polish is for everybody. For everybody. You know why? Because it's fucking cute. And I'll say this. Paint your nails. You'll feel so cute. Uh, you should. You deserve to feel cute. Game Informer did a great job with it, I think. The headline mm -hmm. was great. Their story was great. Um, a lot of these sites, though, don't even pick up these stories. No. Which I think is bananas. Because, like, look, Xbox collaborates with a fucking sock brand, and IGN is out here like... Fucking Xbox socks, bitches! We've Let's got the we've go. got the we've Gamer got the socks. Stand socks uh, sent us. We're unboxing these socks from Stand, and it's just like the dude, Xbox socks. Get somebody in the office to talk about these are these. Uh, here are the colors uh, that they have. Uh, Quest for quartz. Hell yeah! A shimmery sh rose quartz. Uh, pix pixel dust. A shimmery mauve pink pixel that will pixelate your world. So cute. Uh, racing for pinks. A creme rose that will rev oh, your engine. So good. Susie is my avatar. A creamy yes. pink nude that will give you virtual power. Trading paint. A creme apricot that you'll race to the finish for. Heart and console. A shimmery crimson red that takes nails to the next level. The pass is always greener. Yes. Meet your matcha with this creamy pastel green. Uh-huh. Sage simulation. Get lost in a simmer shimmery sage green simulation. It's me. You had me at Halo. Yeah. A shimmery galactic blue that will give you sparkly stats. You can't control me, and it's spelled C-T-R-L. Yep. Uh, a shimmery robin's egg blue that cannot be controlled. Achievement unlocked. Unlock a world of color that's lilac optimized. And new berry. Berry boost your nails with this deep cream purple. So OPI is known for, like, pun names. That's what they do. So, like, these names fit into the, like, OPI naming format. Mm -hmm. And they did such a great job with the collab. I love this. This is good. These are so good. You had me at Halo is so good. That's a very good one. Uh, these are going to be at Ulta's, Ulta stores in February. Um, with every qualifying purchase, U.S. fans unlock Hue-matched in-game content for Forza 5 and Halo Infinite. So every time you buy, you get something for the game. I'm going to go buy some Halo nail polish. Hey, Ulta slash Microsoft. I want to paint my nails. Look how pretty my nails are. Mine are not. I'll paint your nails. Paint my nails. You paint, paint your nails on the show? Sure, paint my okay. nails on the show. Okay. Um, this is a very, this is a great, this is a great collab. I always like when they find new and interesting brands to do things with. And I like when they make it a more integrated collab like this. Yeah. Thank you for not half-assing the collab is yeah. generally my Micro takeaway on that. Microsoft did the work on their side too. And I think yep. that's great. 
Um, nobody half-assed this collab. Nobody half-assed the collab. The bar's low, but I'm excited about it. All right, we got a couple of things to get to still, and they get only weirder from here. Let's talk about... Let's talk about the Golden Globes. Boo. I know, right? Boo, that Hollywood foreign press. Consensus. Boo. Uh, now, the Golden Globes have had problems for the last couple of years. Yep. Uh, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association has come under fire for having horrible representation in its ranks, mm -hmm. uh, for just generally uh, having horrible practices in terms of who is nominated, who's invited, what do they even watch, what do they talk about, How, what do they say about these people when they're not around? Right, and as like people who grew up with most of our parents um, having like watch parties and like the generation right before us, even like my older sister's generation. Mm -hmm was like, oh, we're having, like, we're all getting together to watch award shows. And things like that existed in many communities. Dude, here in L.A., I still have friends that do, because so many people are in the industry. Right. I still have friends that are like, come over and do an Oscar party. Come but over and do a... So much of our generation is completely disillusioned with uh, award shows overall. Trash. There is going to have to be a huge shift if they want to keep award shows alive. And they do, because it's a big industry. So... I'm very interested to see what comes of this because it's showing. <laughs> the, according to Variety, Variety uh, has some inside sources that have said that um, the Golden Globes can't get a single fucking celebrity to show up and be part of the show. That's what Variety said. <laughs> Variety said that. They said there will be no celebrity presenters when the Hollywood Foreign Press Association announces this year's Golden Globe winners on January 9th. Now, there are a lot of reasons for it. The Obviously, the, the bunch of reasons that we talked about, which are Hollywood Foreign Press Association is trash. But also, there's a ding-dang Panera Bread going on. Yep. What am People I gonna? People don't want to risk their life for the Golden Globe. I'm gonna risk my life to ally myself with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association no! this year. I won't even risk my life for groceries some days. And you no. need food to live. Yeah. Um, Absolutely not. Uh, they said the Golden Globes will move forward with a small event on January 9th that will not only award the best performances in television and film for 2021, but recognize the importance of supporting diverse creatives across the industry. Yike. They didn't say we're going to support them. <laughs> no. We didn't say. They didn't but say we recognize the importance of supporting them. Exactly. We have not actually begun supporting them. But we see that it might be kind of important. But we understand that we should. And we want you to know that. Will you come now? Will you come die here at our award show? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think the only um, award show that I watch things from anymore is I'll watch some of the music, uh, the some of the music shows performances on oh, like, yeah. clips on YouTube. Oh yeah, and I'll, I'll watch performances at the Tonys. Yes, I the next day, I wake up, I go to YouTube. Uh huh. MTV's posted all the clips of their music. Exactly. The Grammys have and posted all the stuff. I'll click on two of them. I'll click on the ones that are interesting to me. The Tonys, I'll be like, whatever the fun moments from the Tonys right. are. The whole being dead thing from the Beetlejuice cast at the Tonys. So and good. They still got completely cut on their run. I don't want to talk about it. But you know, <laughs> award shows themselves, three hours long and shit, man. Too much. Come on. Boring. Nah. Boring. No. They're going to have to redo it. They're going to have to do it. Uh, them all in TikTok length. You have up to three minutes. Award shows are so blah. They're just blah. Yeah. You know? They're just blah. I, uh, yeah. Uh, they have yet to announce their official plans. NBC, of course, canceled the telecast. So NBC, who normally carries. Oh, they're going to air it. They're not going to air it. So. Where's your Golden Globes going to be? It's the secret Golden Globes. Yo, is Golden Globes, is the Hollywood Foreign Press Association going to start a Twitch? <laughs> Yo, is the Hollywood Foreign Press Association starting a Twitch channel? Would you watch it if it was on Twitch? 
I'd watch it for five minutes to see if they fucked it up on Twitch. Yeah, right? How quickly they get, uh, like, uh, copyright struck for music. How quickly the DMCA gets oh the Golden Globes. Oh, my God. <laughs> and now, here to perform from, Enca- from Encanto, here to perform is like, and then immediately they get taken down. So No, everybody. but it's the person from Encanto. <laughs> no, it doesn't so matter. So, everybody, I have two questions for you. One, do you still watch award shows? Valid if you do, if you gain enjoyment from it. Do you still watch award shows? Um, do you watch them in full? Do you watch clips after? And two, would you watch any if they streamed them on Twitch? Yo, I look, I don't normally say this. I don't normally encourage this behavior or participate in it. But I'd I'd go to the Hollywood Foreign Press Association's Twitch chat and grief them a little bit. <laughs> 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 like I don't I don't think we should do it to anyone else. We've got a very consistent nose in the chat. Um, I will say, um, somebody said, I enjoy the pretty clothes. That was from Hakasta. Agreed. I do like to look at red carpet pictures after. Yeah, I look I at the pictures after. I love after. to look at the pictures after of pretty dresses. Listen, if, if anybody was going to the Golden Globes the next day here mm-hmm. on the show, we'd probably look at some of the good outfits. Yeah. But nobody is. But the thing is, nobody's going. There's not even going to be any pretty outfits to look at. That's so funny. Dude, the fact that it's not just like limited... Sl- there's, there will be no celebrity presenters. It, it just across the board. They couldn't get a single one. Think of all the people that means they couldn't get. Yo, but that, but that also means like the clout chasers won't go. Yep. Like the celebrities who, who are like, who have been, you, and you know these kinds of people who are like, why don't I get invited to the Golden Globes? Uh-huh. Why don't I get to do this? How come I never get invited to award shows? They won't go. They know it's so t- toxic they shouldn't go. In 2022, which is the first time I've had to say that, feels weird. Blech. They couldn't get Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly on a red carpet. Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly will not make out on your red carpet. Which they'll make out anywhere. I saw them making out in a Chili's. I saw them making out in a Chili's to go in the airport. They ordered a skillet and then stuck their tongues down each other's throats. They didn't even eat the skillet. They didn't eat the skillet. They were just there to stick their tongues in each other's throats. And compare each other to the heat of the skillet. And when the waiter walked by, the waiter, (laughs) and when the server came up to them and was like, hey, uh, do you think I could get you guys anything else? They're like, not anything would compare to the passion that we feel in the bedroom. I am a skillet. I don't even know that, actually. That sounds like a lot. No, mommy's baby boy needs to tell you. Tell him, baby. (laughs) Tell, <laughs> tell him, baby boy, my <laughs> sweet little talented baby boy, my special precious boy. <laughs> yeah. Isn't he perfect? <laughs> <laughs> I love that Machine Gun Kelly is literally just that Chad character that, that Pete Davidson plays yeah. on SNL. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I beg of you, I beg of you to go look up some interviews of Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. You know what my favorite is? Megan Fox on a red carpet was being interviewed and he was like all over her while she was being interviewed. So fucking weird. And they're trying to talk about her and she keeps talking about him. Huge red flag. And she says, he's the most talented boy in the world. She has two sons. She has two sons. She has two sons. Probably close to his age. I don't know. Um, And like, look, I am not going to age shame Megan Fox. Megan Fox is one of the most incredibly perfect looking uh, to uh, current uh, beauty standards people i'm not i'm not gonna flex i'm not jealous she's she's perfect and listen we we've read about we've read about what hollywood did to megan fox we've read about what exes did to megan fox if megan fox wants a simple boy toy let her have it fun with it but the fact that she did say most talented boy in the world she says boy she says i'm not kidding she doesn't say man she says boy i will say this talented boy in the world i I will say this if you're if you're like late 30s early 40s whatever like you should be able to call the person you date a man or a woman you should be able to just say that even if you're dating somebody younger this is the man i'm dating this is the woman i'm dating yeah 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 it's a little weird. And especially, like, how old are those kids? Did that clip get back to them? I don't know. Are they going to see it later on in their I, lives? That's the most talented boy in the world. Meanwhile, like, 
they're like her kids are like coloring pictures at home me and mommy with their nanny and then they're coloring and they're watching they're like oh look it's mommy on the red carpet and it's like oh i'm making a picture of me and mommy do you think she'll like it i think she'll think it's beautiful and she's, and she's gonna think that you're the most talented, talented boy in the world and then like boop, i'm the most talented he's the most talented boy in the world and this kid's just like and then the kid looks up at the fridge and it's all pictures mgk drew <laughs> <laughs> it's all like it's all machine gun it's all machine gun kelly pictures of megan fox that look like a 13 year old drawing nudie ladies in like <laughs> in like the, the, the margins of his notebook right that just saw an anime for the first time and is trying really hard to draw it in an anime style <laughs> uh. <laughs> fuck uh, do we <laughs> How do we how do we continue our show from <laughs> Um speaking of people getting a Twitch. There you go. <laughs> not just the Hollywood Foreign Press Agency. Uh Gordon Ramsay on his on his TV show Next Level Chef. You know, the casting directors of reality shows are always trying to find people who already have social media followings that the mainstream television audience maybe have never heard of. Yeah. One of the contestants on next level chef this year is trisha wang who is trisha is a birdie she's a twitch streamer she has a cooking show on twitch great um gordon ramsay asks well i'll show you <laughs> <laughs> you know what let's just take a look let's go to the videotape what do you do for a living uh i stream on twitch my cooking chef what the f is twitch <laughs> yeah what the yeah, fuck right. is Twitch? What the fuck is Twitch? Honestly, excellent question. Can't answer. Next question. Uh, Don't want to answer. Whenever somebody asks me that, I'm like, oh, I don't want to answer oh, this. Oh, I don't actually want to explain that oh, to you. Oh, no. no. This is going to, I'm going to, mm, I don't like how this makes me sound. I don't like how it makes the world sound. No, seeing my mom's I don't like, friends. I don't like the idea of this you're going to take away from it. I mean, look, here's... Here's where we're going to have different experiences. No matter what I say, if I try to explain what I do, and I'm not explaining producing, because that's, I'll, I'll just say I'm a producer to avoid it. Mm hmm. Which, I mean, yeah. yeah, you are. But if I have to, and somebody's like, well, what do you do on Twitch? Or like, what is this? What do you mean you live stream? Every time they walk away thinking I'm a cam girl. Yep. Every time they walk away thinking I'm a cam girl. So I will not explain it. I will not. I will yeah. say I make I make video game stuff. Yeah, I make I make video game content. I'm in I the make, games. I'm in the games. Industry. I make stuff about games. Don't worry about it. They're like, do you do you play the games? Sometimes. Do you, do you, I don't. You don't make the games. No, I don't make the games. You make stuff about the games. I make stuff about the games. God, the easiest four years of my life was just were just saying I work for Star Wars. Yeah. So easy. Yeah. What do you do? I work for Star Wars, and then before that, I worked for Discovery. Yeah. So easy. Now it's like. <laughs> What do I say? I have a podcast that makes that makes people want to like secretly put a dollar in my shirt pocket and, and make cover sure, their drinks. Yeah, make sure I'm okay. <laughs> make sure I'm okay for money, and then yeah, cover their drinks so I don't <laughs> drug them. Um, uh, yeah, I, that's perfectly fair. The amount of times I've been asked what the fuck is Twitch is so so high. I uh, so Trisha Wang uh, off camera apparently. So, so this was not a scripted exchange, by the way, according to Trisha. This came out of nowhere. She did not know Gordon Ramsay was going to ask her that. Um, apparently, off camera, he asked her if Twitch was like YouTube and if the footage could be edited and mm -hmm. what you do with it. Um, actually asked her a lot about the platform. Look, Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay's going to get on Twitch. He's not. He's a savvy dude. This is a promotional cycle. This is you. The second he – because, listen, he went on Hot Ones because uh -huh. his kid told him to go on Hot Ones. And he got an entirely new audience from that. And I think his kid has a TikTok that's pretty big, if I remember correctly. I believe it. I think I've seen Gordon Ramsay pop up in, like, TikToks and, and their kid. I bet his kid has been saying, we sh you should get on Twitch yeah. forever. Yeah. And he wasn't paying attention. And then when this woman said it mm – -hmm. you know what I mean when you, like – when you tell a friend or a family member something over and over again, and it's not that they're not listening, they just, they're like, 
I understand that that's a thing you think I should do. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've got other stuff going on. And then a third party, they hear it. Some, someone else in the world I says this thing. thing my kid's been talking about. And it's what? like, oh, so it is a big deal. So the follow up to this, which is also very interesting, is Gordon Ramsay tweeting, hey, at Twitch, can I get a lesson in what you are? A lot of people responded. And then we ignore XQC. And then XQC responded, and Gordon Ramsay responded to XQC, which means Gordon Ramsay's son told him who to respond to. We don't like that. However, uh, I think it's kind of interesting because Trisha Wang, obviously, her channel's blowing up from this. Yeah, she's doing great. That's why she went on the show. She called it an endearing boomer moment. Yeah, a lot of people don't take social media chefs seriously, but I hope to prove them differently. Fucking get it. Uh, when Kotaku reached out to her for comments, she said she would have laughed through the exchange, but she was too busy crying. Oh. <laughs> she was like, I was. it was kind of embarrassing. Uh, I'm sure. That's a tough thing to be put on the spot about. Um, Anthony. Sage. Have you seen the two sentence horror story that's going around? It's a huge trend on the internet right now. Two sentence oh, horror Oh, yeah, yeah, stories. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it started off legitimate. Um, it's these things that have like existed on Red, like on Reddit for a long time, like short, scary stories mm-hmm. and stuff like that. There are some Twitter accounts that have been doing it for years. Exactly. So two sentence horror stories blew up recently. But most importantly, bad two sentence horror stories blew up recently. And a large piece of them have been taking those that have just been posted seriously that are just like, they ask me what the sound was coming from my room. They do not know that that sound is from my creature. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and so everybody's been making these my creature memes, and this was a personal favorite of mine. Uh, Damien came running into the room with this one. Gordon Ramsay on Kitchen Nightmares. Where are you getting this eggnog? Staff. We milk it fresh from the creature every day. Fuck me. They milk it from the creature. This place is going under. <laughs> Fuck me. They Fuck milk it from me. The creature. They milk it from the creature. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. Fuck me. They milk it from the creature. Uh God damn, that's this good. This place is going under. God damn, that's good. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> uh, I want to end today. Oh, me too. <laughs> Let's call it. Hey, everybody, you have my permission to end today. Go it's over. back to bed. Get out of here. Go uh, back to bed. But before before we end the show, uh, you know, we were talking on Monday about all the stuff that's been going on in the games industry mm-hmm. and how people are trying to unionize. We've, this is a theme that we've been talking about for months and months and months. This is the theme of the world. And one of the, uh, one of the things we were talking about when we were talking about our games of the year, we were talking about uh, Chicory. Yeah. And we expressed a little bit of surprise that the Chicory team felt happy, healthy, rested enough. To make another game already. They're already on their way. And we, we said, this is because of Finji. Uh, and Bex and Adam Saltzman, who run Finji, the game publisher, they're a small game publisher. They've put out some wonderful things. And Bex put out a Twitter thread yesterday that I want to I want to read almost enti- in its entirety uh, because this is the attitude that the games industry and all industries right now need to be adopting. Uh, Beck says, apparently there's some confusion about budgets for small studios in the U.S. Finji payroll is not cheap. Taxes, salaries, health care, etc. And we don't have coastal salaries. Finji is 10 full-time people, two dev contractors, two part-time contractors on other projects. Working in games is a job. You pay people so they can pay school loans and rent and groceries and have families and travel. And in the US, they also have to pay for health insurance. My payroll is under a million each year. If we were located on a coast, it would be so much more. Yep. No one here is making coastal rates and Adam and I are not the highest paid people at Finji. When you add payroll for the team, even a bare bones marketing budget, equipment, licenses, games are expensive. Can I pay people less? I can, but I won't. 
Can I hire all contractors instead of full-time people to dodge the health insurance costs? I can, but I won't. Making games can be sustainable and safe for teams, and it's my job to make it that way for the amazing people I work with. Math is math. A budget for any team that doesn't pay a living wage for collaborators is not a realistic budget. It doesn't account for the true cost of development. Are you burning your savings? That's budget. Is your partner supporting you? That's budget. Are you working for free? That's budget. This no-nonsense way to look at the cost of making games isn't fun. It's stressful and anxiety-inducing, and it's my job every day. The politest way I can state this is I chafe a bit when anyone questions how deserving a small team is of a budget that pays them enough to be alive. Now, she's talking about deals from platform holders, exclusivity deals, things like your PlayStations, your Microsofts, but also your Humble Bundles, your Epic Game Stores, stuff like that. People don't value other people right now. Yep. And in games, that is a huge, huge deal. Uh, and I love that it's, it's so funny to me that the smallest people in the industry with the most to lose yep. are the ones that are speaking out the most. Yep. Um, if you want to support Finji, some, somebody was like, that's a company to support. Look up Finji Games. Yep. Tunic is coming out soon. They released Chicory, uh, Overland, uh, Night in the Woods. They put out a lot of really great games. Uh, and they're games. wonderful people. What a great way to – look. that's a win-win for you. That's a win-win. You win, get to support win, win, a very win. cool company that supports very cool people, and you get to play a good game. That's the joys of indie games. Yeah. Full disclosure, they're dear friends of mine, and I'm fucking proud of it. Uh I don't know him. <laughs> so I get to have no bias and say, Chicory was really nice. Chicory was really Chikori nice. Chicory was just a really good time. Folks, thank you so much for joining us today. Very cool of you. It's so cool of you. Happy I, I was Wednesday. thinking about how cool it was of them. Yeah, right? And it was like. Pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Because hey. like we could, we could come here and we could set up these microphones <laughs> And, like, no one shows up. And we just talk to each other. And we just talk to each other. And we that, would. That's cool. We do that. <laughs> yeah. But, damn. We probably wouldn't, you know, set the mics. No. No. But we love it that you, we love it that y'all come, you show up, you hang out, you contribute. And uh, we some, love you. Yeah. Some of these stories were sent in by y'all on the Discord. That's great. Very cool. Um, a lot of y'all are funnier than us. That's great, too. <laughs> uh, Skywalker said, I just got here, and now we're like, goodbye. Hey, that's okay. There's always the VOD. There's the VOD's here, and it goes up on YouTube later. And there's a whole other show on Friday. We do this show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific. So if it was your first time here, we hope you'll come back and join us. Thank you for starting your morning with us. I think it should be a habit. Yeah. We like seeing you. Make a habit of it. Hey, we are going to go through and thank everybody who supported us during the show today because it is so fucking cool of you to do. We run month-long donation goals. This is our start of the one for January. This uh, is because this show doesn't make any money. Um, mm -hmm. full, we're, we're a very transparent channel. Things like subs go to the channel functioning and running because costs money. Yeah. Costs money. Software, things like that. Yeah. Uh, Basic things. Overhead. And then individual donations that y'all give go to us uh, because we're human beings that have costs. It, yep. You know, it costs money to be a human being, and we appreciate you helping us to offset those costs. Let's get a little sugar breakfast. Um, before, we run, before we run that roll call, mm -hmm. Sage... Where else can people find you this week? You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I stream on my channel Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturdays. Tonight I will be live. Uh, we're in my Discord. I'm letting you guys choose the game for tonight, either uh, How to Date a Magical Girl or Man of Medan. Uh, you can find me tomorrow on Hyper RPG. You can find me all the time on Smosh Games. And uh, the Black Dice Society returns this month Ooh, on the D&D channel. Yay. A lot of stuff. How about you, Anthony? Well, in a half an hour, 10 a.m. Pacific time, I'm going to be on Kind of Funny. Uh, guesting on Book of Boba Fett in review. This is our spoiler-filled review show all about Book of Boba Fett. Some of the Spider Boys, if you watched a Spider-Man rewatch, some of them will be there. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. That Book of Boba Fett, that's a good Star War. Uh, also, Fridays, my science podcast with Jeff Kanata, uh, We Have Concerns, comes out at wehaveconcerns.com. 
Uh, I'm everywhere on the internet at A Carboni, except for here on Twitch, where I'm at Anthony Carboni. Twitch, you coward smine. Give it back to me. And uh, I think that's it for right now. Nice. Nice. Pretty good. Pretty good. We're going to do some streams soon. We're going to do some streams gotta, soon. Gotta, gotta fix my, my Retroid. I know. I keep asking when. I know. I know. But thank you to everybody who supported us. There's a bunch of ways you can do it that are not monetary in any way. You can join the Discord. It's free to do. You can follow us on the socials, individually or on the Pixel Circus accounts. All right? You can tell somebody about the show. You can make Ooh. a clip. You can tweet that clip when we're going live. Dude, word of mouth is the biggest thing. It's the number one thing you could do. If you like the show and you share it with a friend that you think will like the show, that's such a huge thing for us. If you see something, say something. If you see a person, say a person. Let's go through this roll call, shall we? Uh, Mr. Laugh, 81, with the 200 bits. Thank you very much. Cassidy Weaver with 100 bits, saying to help you maintain your human skins. Thank you. Mine needs watering. Thunder Cabbage with 200 bits. Uh, John Doe, 64, with $24.02 for the test tube steak fun. The word test doing a lot of work in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Old Man Yon <laughs> with 100 bits. Kalen Rohr with a gift sub to Skywalker 9982. You're trapped here now. Yeah. Stale Knight, Skywalker 9982. Dead Daddy uh, 97. You're, uh, thank you all for the follow. Ronan Monkey with a $21.67 tip. Sugar Breakfast, because I want to have fun with numbers. Ronan is one of our very good mods. Very good. And you don't have to do that, Ronan. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fantasy, thank you for the follow. Kalen Roar with 1,400 bits saying the Beyond Nuggy Bitty Fund. Thank you. Uh, Gothic Owl 12, Lou 33B, Anton FJ 100, Goblin Castle, Grumpy, St or thank you for the follows. Grumpy Steen with the resub for 16 months. That's a lot of months. That's all of them. Dr. Algorithm, Pizza Yeti, uh, Gret Gretinus, Fall from Hell 7, Drew, Natasaurus, Natasaur Rex, Madeline Elizabeth 21, uh, thank you all for the follows. Jessup, Jesus Pie with the six month resub. Thank you very much, Jesus Pie. Dolphin Pants 4 with the follow. No Bluff Lou with the follow. Gro Groovy Deadite with the resub for seven months. That's a good amount of time. Groovy Deadite with the host. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, Decron82 there with that last moment follow. Thank I you. I think we had a couple of things come in. Self War Can Opener with the sub, Skywalker with the bits, and Jam and Far uh, with the sub for two months. Hey, so fucking cool, y'all. Hey. Thank you. Babies, we love having you here. We do. We love bringing you the news. We do. And um, we're going to love doing it again on, on Friday. Friday. Yay. See you then. Bye, friends. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.